So I guess this video we're probably just gonna deal with Benny. Hey, come on, pal! I'm trying to put on a show. What? Right, the oh yeah, I'm probably also gonna make like not skip dialogue because I feel like a lot of people who haven't played this game are gonna be like, "Why the hell are you skipping on the dialogue?" So, yeah. Um, like I promised last time, I'm gonna hit Lonesome Road real quick. Oh wait a second, I should probably check my stats real quick. So I want to do it if my speech speech is not all the way. All right, I'll do ring in again first. I'm gonna do this so I can talk to Benny. Shoot Benny immediately. Hey, hey fellow, welcome to the Top's Hotel and Casino. I'm gonna have to ask you to hand over any weapons you might be carrying. Smooth and easy, just the way I like it. Don't worry, they'll be as safe as kittens till you're ready to leave. Oh, and a friendly word of advice. If you happen to stumble across any weapons during your stay here, well, just don't wear them openly. You dig? Now that we got that little business out of the way, what can I do to make your tops experience the tops? Have a good time, baby. All right. I'm gonna speak to this guy, Spank. Hey there, pal. Welcome to the tops. And what can I do for you today? And uh, da, 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 Benny. Really? You got something to say about the big boss, huh? Well, why don't you say it to his face instead of yapping at me? Huh? What are you talking about? That doesn't... Why would he pull a stunt like that? Got anything else to offer? He's a dipshit. He's trying to pull a fast one on the big man. Crazy bastard. You got any more? Jesus, I can't even believe it. After all House did to set us up with this swank joint. Swank I don't suppose time. there's more. Jesus, kid, I think we got a real problem on our hands. I can't believe Benny's a no-good stinking punk trying to play house like that. Tell you what, I'll call Benny, keep him away from his suite. You go search the place. Here's the key, it's on the 13th floor. It's a room with the double doors, can't miss it. Maybe you'll find something we can show to Mr. House and get him arrested. I'd rather just kill him right now. Take him out? Jesus. Okay, well, if you think that's the best way to deal with this, I'll send him up to his room. You can ambush him there. And don't worry about the rest of the chairman. I'll keep him from getting involved. You'll still have to watch out for Benny's guards, though. Here's your stuff back. In case Benny don't go quiet, you dig? I'll tell the boys to give you a pass to pack some heat. Go on, then. Elevators are past the slot machines on your right. All right, easy. What in the goddamn? You? How could you be? Oh, swank, you thinky bastard. You got a crazy drop on me, baby. But you don't want to kill me. We should be working together. Can't do that, baby. The chip, it's special. But save you this, man. I can copy the presidential best suite in the house. After what you've been through, you deserve a taste of the VIP lifestyle. Give me a moment or two to catch my breath and knock back a few cocktails, and I'll swing by for a meet and greet. I'll clue you in, guaranteed, every question answered. This could be the start of a beautiful friendship. I know, I made a bad first impression. You got every reason to think I'm a creep. But baby, this is an 18 karat opportunity. But not even 24. I've got the chip. But to see this shindig through to the end, I'm gonna need help. And hello, who shows up but you? It can't be a coincidence, baby. You and me were meant to work together. Here's oh, the key. I'll be buying a few. Just as soon as my legs stop shaking. Alright, and we don't have to <laughs> deal with Benny anymore. <laughs> Bam. Alright, we have the best 9mm pistol in the game. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a P 
PDQ? Nah. You can call me yes man. It's what Benny always called me. Probably because I'm programmed to be so helpful. Oh, he had some help. A lady friend of his. She said something about living in a fort over in Freeside. But that's all I remember. Sure. Benny had me look at it a bunch of times. It's a data storage device, kind of like a holotape, but a lot more advanced. As for what's on it, well, some of Mr. House's data transmissions made it sound like the chip could upgrade his defenses somehow. That's just a guess, though. The chip's a proprietary format. You need special hardware to read the data on it. There are two locations with non-standard hardware on the network. A lucky 38 and an underground facility at Fortification Hill. I'd look there. Oh, he wanted to kill Mr. House and use the platinum chip to copy my neural computational matrix onto the lucky 38's mainframe. That would give me control over all of Mr. House's defenses, most prominently his Securitron. And then I guess I just do as I'm told. I was programmed to be helpful and answer any questions I was asked. I guess nobody bothered to restrict who I answer questions for. That was probably pretty dumb, huh? Don't stay away too long. Is Benny taken care of yet? Huh. Guess that makes me the boss. Ring-a-ding. All right, cool. Going to the divide. Oh boy, can't wait. This early on in the game. Ah, all right. <laughs> oh, I am definitely not just gonna grab one piece of armor and leave. Oh no. Oh, let's go breathing mask. Oh, I can't wear the glasses with it. Oh well. Alright, I'm probably not going to put this on the dinger because uh, you can only use Eddie in Lonesome Road. Or this version of Eddie in Lonesome Road. So, I don't really care. It's my video. Wait a second. What was that dialogue option? Is like, Eddie, is that you? Alright, this is what we need. There might be a man in here. No. There we go. We got what we came here for. Hey, welcome aboard. 
Oh, okay, cool. You've been a busy courier, haven't you? You take your obligation to deliver a package very seriously. An ethic for which I am grateful. I will admit, when you ignored my invitation, I predicted negative outcomes. But you have a way of exceeding expectations, don't you? Well, enough. Let's have the chip then. Fine. Give me the chip and I'll pay you four times the delivery bonus stipulated in your contract. How's that? Such a small thing, isn't it? And yet so... capacious. So very dear. Decades of hiring salvagers out west to search for this little... relic in the ruins of a place called Sunnydale. Back then, anyway. That's where the chip was printed. On October 22nd, 2077. It was to have been hand-delivered to me here at the Lucky 38 the next day. But the bombs fell first. Suffice it to say, the delivery was never made. A great deal shall be happening. A cascade of events with you taking a central role. At the moment, however, all you need to do is take the elevator all the way down to the bottom level. You'll understand soon enough. Shows off his United States fucking weapons testing shit. I expect you're well familiar with my Securitrons by now. The titanium alloy housing that protects its electronic core deflects small arms and shrapnel easily enough. Its X25 Gatling laser, produced to spec by Glassing Housing, is deadly against soft targets at medium range. And for close range suppression or crowd control, the Securitron is armed with a 9mm submachine gun. All of this you probably already knew. What you did not know is that these are the Securitron's secondary weapons. All this time, my Securitrons have had to get by running the Mark I operating system, which lacked software drivers for their primary weapons. Today, with the delivery of the Platinum chip, all that changes. Behold, for the first time, Securitron's running the Mark II OS. What? The M235 missile launcher. What the fuck? Hi. If you're looking for medical help, try the other doctors. I'm just a researcher, not even a particularly good one. Oh, you know, finding alternative treatments for common illnesses and injuries, stim packs, out of barrel cacti, and other fantastic improbabilities. As far as fruitless wastes of time go, it's quite noble, it seems. For the past hundred years or so, the followers have managed to get by using salvaged medical supplies from the old world. But the side effect of medical success is that more people live longer. Funny how that works. Eventually, it will run out of hospitals to do. We need new ways to produce those supplies, or maybe old ways, if this research goes anywhere. I'm enthusiastic about helping people, but nihil no way soup so late. Caesar can cite Cato to suit his purpose. Many people have spoken Latin. Some of them were quite pleasant. It's unfortunate that the language is now associated with a gentleman across the river. That's a bit much, calling him a gentleman. Not from the Legion, if that's what you're getting at. Books, sheet music, gladiator movie holotapes, bits and pieces here and there. The followers have extensive libraries, but we all draw water from the same old well. Even Caesar. Ah. <sighs> I don't know anything that the others couldn't tell you. Caesar was one of the followers, before my time, of course. He wanted to rebuild the new world in the image of the old. A sad story of good intentions gone bad. In that regard, he's hardly unique. If you set aside his leadership capabilities, extensive knowledge, and ruthless cunning, he's just another jerk who steps on people to get his way. Oh, sorry. There's nothing new under the sun. If Agave and Mesquite were that miraculous, the locals would have figured it out a few thousand years ago. Certainly. Not all followers are people persons. Besides, someone needs to do research. I have no problem with Julie sticking me back here. Out of sight, out of mind. 
There are worse things one can be, though I do admit it is a bit boring. Though it has a noble goal, I don't think this research will yield much fruit. No, no offense intended, but why should I go anywhere with you? Hmm. That seems appropriately resolute and yet vague. <laughs> I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and go with you, but let me be clear about something. If you plan to help Caesar's Legion, this is going to be a brief relationship. I may not have all the answers for how to fix Freeside's problems, but Caesar taking control isn't part of the solution. Fair? All right, let's not waste any time. There are people out there to help, things to learn. Maybe not in that order, but let's get to it. Uh, go back? Yeah, because we need to get Boone. And then, I think, we'll need to go to Black Mountain to get Danny Trejo's character. And then we need Lily from Jacobstown. And we'll need Rex. And then Cassidy or whatever. Cass. Right. Hello there. It's good to see a friendly face. I almost took the for a raider out right there. Name's Malcolm. Malcolm Holmes. Don't suppose you care to trade. You're missing a few essentials and... Ah, oh, screw this. Line just ain't in my nature. I'll tell it to you straight. I've been following you for a good bit now. It started off innocently enough. I was traveling, as I often do, and happened to observe you picking up one of those blue star caps. You didn't show any reaction to it, so I figured you didn't know what you've gotten your hands on. There's an old wasteland legend that says somewhere out there is a fabulous treasure pew, pew. from the Ford The, the funniest gun of all time. The tale goes are the key to that treasure. They're called Sunset Sarsaparilla Stars. All over the place. The easiest place to find them is unopened bottles of Sunset Sarsaparilla. You'd think they'd all have been picked clean by now. But somehow, the bottles keep appearing in the machines. Some say it's old Festus that does it, hoping someone will finally collect enough caps to earn the treasure. Other than bottles, you'll just have to scavenge. You can find caps in the unlikeliest of places. Blue Star caps are no exception. It's said that the treasure is guarded by a man named Festus, and he's the one who asked for the Blue Star caps. It's also said he's been around since the war, standing in lonely vigil, waiting for someone to come and take the treasure off his hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Boone. Wake the fuck up. Welcome to the Crimson Caravan. Welcome to the Crimson Caravan Company. Um. Certainly. What would you like to know? The Crimson Caravan Company has been in business for over 130 years. We're partially responsible for the progress in the NCR. Well, the gunrunners continued to dominate the weapons market. And the Mormon traders from New Canaan control oh. the majority of the northern routes. Normally, I oversee company operations at the hub in California. However, the new Vegas branch has been underperforming in recent years. Given the conditions here, it's not hard to see why. I'll change all that soon enough. I'm afraid we have no current openings for caravanners or guards, but I am in need of a runner. Deliver this invoice to Dr. Hildern. You can find him somewhere inside Camp McCarran. It's been a pleasure. 
Pleasure to meet you. I'm Dr. Thomas Hildern, Director of Operations, OSI East. I presume you're here about Vault 22? From Alice. I'll see that she's paid right away. Crimson Caravan runs a tight operation. Even out here in the waste, wouldn't do to keep them waiting. Was there anything else? Or were you just here about the influence? Wonderful. Straight to it, then. Have you signed the release forms? No? Doesn't matter. We'll keep that to ourselves. Vault 22. Where to begin? All right. Straight to the point. I believe that the inhabitants of Vault 22 unlocked the secrets of vegetative growth. Plants are spilling from their feet. No one tends them. No one waters them. Yet they multiply and spread in all directions. Find the reason for this miraculous growth, and I promise you the OSI will see that you are generously compensated. Good. No need to check in with the NCR authorities. I can authorize your payment from OSI accounts. Vaults typically contain a server room on a lower level, where they would have backed up their research data. A computer room, you understand? Download all the information on the central server to your pip boy, and you'll be certain to bring me any notes or samples that you find, won't you? Best of luck to you. Not that you'll need it. You seem like a reasonably competent person. I... Did Dr. Hildern... This really isn't any of my business, but... Did he give you a job? I shouldn't say anything. I know that, but you're not the first person Hildren sent out to the vault. There were a lot of mercs, one after another. None of them came back. Then, about a week ago, there was a scientist, Keeley. She's unusual, not the sort of person you'd expect, but she's an absolute genius, and... and he didn't mention her? Not even her name? Or any of the other mercs? No, I knew the danger wouldn't. I'm not trying to scare you off the job. Listen, I make a fair wage, but I'm not rich, not by any means. Maybe my kind of money wouldn't appeal to your average merc, but I'm willing to pay you if you'll find Keeley and make sure she's safe. In right leaving her out there. No idea if she's alive or dead. I had a good feeling about you. The moment you walked in, I mean it. Right, good luck. All right. Welcome back. Well, you've proven yourself reliable so far. Would you be interested in more important jobs? As much as I like to handle matters personally, I can't be everywhere at once. There is a negotiation with a smaller trading outfit that I'd like to resolve as quickly as possible. There's also the matter of Henry Jameson, an employee whose services I'd rather do without. His family connections make it difficult, however. And finally, I need someone to acquire the Gunrunner's manufacturing specifications. This job needs to be quiet. No alarms, no deaths. Thank you. Was there something else? You come around like a bad habit. What's on your mind? They want to buy Cassidy Caravans? Don't they know it's burned to ash? No. Even times being what they are. Not sure I'm looking to sell. Even for all the whiskey in need now. <sighs> Mojave happened. Hit by raiders packing some heavy firepower. Can't believe the Crimson Caravan haven't heard. So if you want to buy all of Cassidy Caravans, you're looking at it. And what I got in my pockets. Still, as little as that is, not what you say. If someone came up to you and offered you a thousand caps for your name, would you take it? Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I don't want to hear your answer anyway. Point is, I make a caravan. Not about the money. 
dad'd spin like a twister if he ever heard I sold our name for anything. Look, I know you came all this way, and that takes some drive, especially these days. Just doesn't feel right. Trading history for a slip of paper. I wouldn't be here drinking in some shitty bar in the ass in nowhere if it wasn't true. Give me that paper. I'll put my name to it. No sense trying to hold the past between your fingers when it's nothing but dirt. All right. There you go. Caravan's yours. Feel kind of relieved, actually. Guess I didn't realize how much I was carrying around with just the name. <laughs> no idea. Maybe head back west, though the idea of heading back there with my tail between my legs isn't appealing. Go with you? And why the hell would I do that? So you're looking for someone to help, not just tag along. Huh. Walking the Mojave with you can't be any worse than here, that's for sure. All right, I'm in. Boom. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Um, quick little side note, this is the end of this whole little series thing for the Greatest SMV playthrough. Because while recording stuff for my next video, I accidentally deleted my save. So, that's pretty cool. Now, speaking of the next video, the Sierra Madre video, um, I was originally going to make that the next video, but then it ended up taking, you know, a while, and I'm still working on it. I haven't even finished the script yet. So I decided to finish this in the meantime and hopefully it'll do okay. But I just wanna let you know, this will be the last video of this little series, sadly, unintended. So, yeah, whatever. Also, I finally made an actual outro thing, so here it is. I open my bag of feels, move my blood like I'm a real